Okay. Um, yes, thank you for the invitation. I'm very pleased to be here uh, again. I've been part of a previous interaction of this forum, and uh, I will uh, uh, repeat a little bit uh, some fundamental information about uh, this project, Papillons, Plastic in Agricultural Production. And I will also introduce something new that we are working as part of both Papillons and the project Proland that Eric mentioned, something that I uh, hope... Uh, could be a nice surprise for you and uh, um, um, something that can help uh, going towards uh, forward together in the process of understanding better the problem of plastic use in agriculture. Uh, but let's start from uh, uh, from uh, this presentation now. So um, uh, I like to show this this figure. It represents the conversion of land towards agricultural land during the last 2,000 years. As you can see, there has been an immense shift. Uh, at the moment, about 50% of all habitable land is devoted to agriculture, most for the production of feeds for animals. If we plot over this figure the growth of human population, you could see a very strong correlation. This is a typical case of two variables reinforcing each other. More people need more food, more food, more people. And that went on for several centuries. We are now facing uh, a challenge of having soon to produce food for uh, 10 billion people. And we don't have much more margin to convert land. That should not be actually done because it comes with a course in biodiversity, ecosystem, functioning, uh, and also carbon uh, storage. Uh, converting land means essentially deforestation. Um, yeah, so how did, do we achieve this challenge? Well, we already know that a large part of agricultural soil in the world are exhausted. There is a substantial loss of organic carbon, nutrients. There is chemical pollution. And we are also under the stress of the effect, negative effect of climate change. It looks really an impelling, difficult challenge. In, I know that it may look a little bit far from Norway. Norway will not be the crowdiest country in the world, hopefully. But our food system is interconnected with the global food system. So there will be implication also for us. So the answer to this question is that we will rely more and more on technology. And in the last uh, decades, plastic had gained a lot of importance as a commodity to enable efficient and reliable agriculture, including in locations where it was not possible to cultivate like arid area or cold area, like in the case of the Nordics. So there is a, uh, many different products that are used in agriculture, mulching film, greenhouses, micro uh, different uh, different products that help protecting crops from extreme weather. We have some sophisticated uh, systems like low release, slow release of fertilizer and pesticides encapsulated into plastic polymers. Also seeds are in, can be encapsulated and so on. Bags has been mentioned, high bales, very common here in agri Norwegian agriculture. So technology on one side and circularity on the other side. So the use, the, the, the use of uh, uh, biomasses to amend soil, to control soil property, is increasingly adopted, especially in, developing, in developed countries. So the sewage sludge and uh, digestates from uh, compost. This is a, one facility in Norway, the large, single largest factory uh, I, I read uh, producing digestate, producing biogas and consequently also digestates. Yes, unfortunately, as all these uh, things I'll show you now are all vectors of plastic to agricultural soil. Sewage sludge is known as a main source of plastic. Compost can be a source of plastic, depending on the source material used to produce it. So this is a planetary challenge, and this very recently has been taken up by international organization. 
So there has been an important report, report from the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United, of the United Nations in 2021, Assessment of Agricultural Plastic and Their Sustainability, a call for action. This has a global scope. The European Green Deal is also uh, focusing, so European Commission has a big focus on uh, soil health uh, on the one side and uh, agricultural plastic, especially the use of mulching film and the management of films in agriculture. They are under the lenses of the Commission. There will be soon uh, some uh, deliberation with regard to the use of this material. Also, you know, there is this ongoing, as been mentioned, ongoing uh, plastic treaty uh, where agricultural plastic will certainly be a key component. We are talking about food security here, so this is a difficult, difficult topic to handle from the policy point of view. So, in response to all this environment, we started the Project Papillons. The acronym stands Plastic in Agricultural Production. Uh, impact, life cycles, and long-term sustainability is a European, uh, financed by the European Union. It includes, is coordinated by NIVA, and it includes 20 partners uh, from all over Europe, basically. We have uh, several components here. Uh, we look at um, mapping the use of, micro of agricultural plastic in uh, Europe. Uh, we are working on inventories, and I will come back to you later about this specific point concerning Norway. We are looking at how easily this material can fragment under different conditions. Uh, biodegradability in soil, we are also addressing uh, biodegradable plastic used in agriculture. They represent a small fraction of the total use of films, for example, for mulching, but is an expanding fraction and is also mentioned often as an uh, environmental friendly option that can uh, be part of the solution of, the, of uh, reducing the generation of plastic waste in agriculture. We are doing reverse engineering. We want to learn uh, what chemicals are present in this material. Of course, plastic is never only polyethylene, polypropylene. It's always a formulation with several tens, sometimes hundreds of different chemicals, metals and organic chemicals, some of which may also have some toxicological properties. Then we look at also how do microplastics, after they are released to soil, how do they behave in soil? Do they stay there? They have a long-term accumulation rate, or they are moving away, they may percolate, or they may uh, be trans transported to the water ecosystem. Those are all open questions still under investigation by our and several other projects, including Eric projects, you have a focus on this. Uh, we are also having a big uh, focus on uh, the impact on soil ecosystem. We look at the impact on soil fauna, uh, soil properties, uh, nutrient cycle, microorganism community, uh, plant health, and uh, plant production, so crop production. We, also, we will start soon looking into the uh, cost and benefit analysis on the long-term perspective, also the farm level, to understand whether... You have, uh, of course, by using a mulching film, for example, you may have an immediate benefit, but uh, if that results in soil pollution, how long it will take before your soil could become unhealthy? Okay, those are the kind of questions we are addressing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, those are some pictures of the activity we are developing. As I said, uh, this map represents uh, our idea of developing European level maps of uh, uh, agricultural plastic use and waste generation, which could also be useful to estimate the total pollution or in terms of micro and nanoplastic that goes to soil from that use. Also, you know, waste mismanagement is also a serious problem in some part of Europe. We are also looking about how much of that plastic will enter into this uh, undesired end-of-life process, like burning uh, you know, on the field or burying inside the soil and so on. I will show you some picture about that later on. We have mesocosm, sophisticated mesocosm experiments, these cylinders, um, experiment with plants. We have uh, this field scale experiment in three locations in Europe, in, one in Spain, one in Germany, and one in Finland to cover the 
three bioregions, main bioregion in Europe, and we added artificially created microplastic uh, after grinding mechanically mulching film to soil. We live there for two years and we look uh, several parameters of uh, soil ecosystem, including also agricultural performance and so on. But uh, what I want to focus now is on the inventories, and this is a sort of surprise I wanted to bring forward. Uh, we are uh, in the process, and this is uh, an activity that is across both the Papillon project and also the Proland project, this project that we have in collaboration with the Bioregion and uh, Nibio. We are preparing a survey that we want to share with you. Uh, I will not do it today because it's not ready, but uh, the, you can expect a mail from us in the next weeks. The survey is targeting farmers, uh, uh, industry, uh, um, authorities, anyone in the value chain of agricultural plastic. And uh, we are uh, behind uh, some information that will help us to create uh, these inventories of agricultural plastic use and waste generation in Norway. Um, so some of the typical questions we can ask, uh, what type of plastic products are used, in which type of production and where, how many chemical containers, for example, of uh, empty pesticides container farm produce in average in Norway, how many vegetable farms use high tunnels or greenhouse to understand what is the typology of material used and the type of waste that is generated, how much of this waste can be recycled, for example. And you know that in the context of the policy development that we've been mentioning, there will be a change. We cannot expect that in the next two years the business in the use of agricultural plastic here in Norway, including here in Norway, will be the same as usual. There will be changes called for the international policy development that Norway will embrace. Norway is a high ambition country for the plastic treaty. So we will be most likely be the first one adopting certain kind of measure. So this map is useful not just for scientists, but should be useful for all of us to better frame the problem, having a quantitative perspective. Okay, so these are the typology of plastic that we want to focus here in Norway. I don't have time to go in the detail here, but uh, we have made a classification and we present the definition. So the people, those of you that will respond to the questionnaire will be able to understand better what our question refers to. Um, yeah, so I want to clarify two important points. The first one, what do we want to know? I already mentioned a little bit, but these are really much the key question. What are the most uh, plastic intensive crops in Norway? What are the largest category of agricultural plastic products used in Norway? I saw before that we have some of this information, but we need to bridge the gap between the different stakeholders. And for us as scientists, it's very useful to understand how would you classify and understand which data exist at the moment. How does the plastic compare across climate conditions? So Norway is a very elongated country with a strong north-south. The use of agricultural plastic is very different in different regions in Norway. Uh, how is the use of agricultural plastic, how does the use of agricultural plastic compare with the ability of managing the waste? Are farmers in Norway satisfied in the way the waste is managed, or there is some problem to solve, for example, logistically or cost-wise, administratively, and so on. How does the use of agricultural plastic in Norway compare to the use in other countries? So how, how well are we doing compared to Spain, Greece, Italy, Germany? Uh, this is not uh, yet uh, something solved. Um, yes, this is an example. We will do this job in collaboration with a partner in Papillon from Italy. They have created this map uh, from a region in south of Italy. So the map on the, on the right side is a land use map, and from that information, overlapping information collected from farmer and stakeholder, retailers of agricultural plastic, they could create the map on the right side that represents the waste generation in, uh, in farms 
from agricultural plastic. So we want to do something similar in Norway. And we actually have already a good tool. This is uh, the land use map. Uh, uh, this is Nibio product. So on the right side is a land use map. On the left side is a estimation of crops based on by field, at the field level. We will not do at this level, but we may try to do at the municipality level, so that's the scope. We will therefore average information that we receive, for example, for farmers, and will be respected all confidentiality on the information. And, and we want to create also a map of agricultural plastic use. Uh, so next, uh, why we are doing this? Uh, this is very important to be clear. So we want to promote innovation. Innovation in the way plastic is designed, is used, is managed also at the farm level. And for that you need to start enumerating the volumes. Uh, quantities matter when, uh, for, making, for developers to make investments. Uh, we need to provide advice based on region and climate on the best use of, pl of plastic and the best uh, a way of managing the waste, help authority, or indeed for waste management, but also the private sector, uh, and promote circularity. Uh, that's eventually circularity as a strong connection with the geographic distribution of nodes and resources to make circularity. A map is the best tool to do that. And it will be a totally open map contributed by, by you guys. So, um, this is the person, Cecilia Van, is the person working on this. She's a social anthropologist working in NIVA. So please feel free to get in touch with her. Uh, we will soon be ready to circulate this survey. So thank you very much for this. That was my first presentation.